He is risen. He is risen indeed. I just want to take this in for a second. Just seeing, seeing you here, um, hearing, hearing your voices. Uh, you know, as we came in, it's like, I, I wasn't really sure what to expect, and we'll talk more about that a little bit later on in the service, but I just needed a, needed a second here. Wow. It is great. Uh, it is great to see you uh, in this place and to welcome all of you um, at home as well. So um, God is good. All the time. Amen. So uh, a few announcements I just want to share with you. Um, and... Uh, go over some instructions as, as well. Obviously, it's a little bit different with masks and everything. So thank you for, uh, for, all, for your patience. But um, before I get to some of those things, in the life of the church, we have some exciting opportunities that are coming up, as well as some of the ongoing ones I want to call to your attention. Um, Pastor Stan and I are going to begin a class called uh, Mysterious Ways, Experiencing the Holy Spirit. And we're going to start this coming Wednesday at 7 o'clock. It'll be via Zoom. Uh, we'll send out a mailing, all church mailing, with some uh, information or questions and things for you to think about as we kind of try to understand the person of the Holy Spirit. And part of what we're going to be looking at is why is it so hard to sort of describe the Holy Spirit uh, to, to others? So I hope you'll join us for our class. Uh, six weeks, I think, we're going, and we're beginning, like I said, this coming Wednesday at 7 o'clock. Um, next week, I believe it's on Thursday, uh, not this coming Thursday, but the week after on Earth Day, we're showing, a, uh, uh, showing the movie Dark Waters, also via Zoom, uh, to um, take a look at kind of commemorating Earth Day and uh, creation care. It's a story of a, an attorney that ends up in a, a big case that uh, uh, re- results in um, a large uh, settlement uh, paid for by... Uh, DuPont um, in one of the biggest uh, kind of chemical sort of cover-ups. And he's a man, of, a man of faith. It's not a big part of the movie, but as people of faith, we're going to explore that part of it a little bit more as well. So uh, you're welcome to join us. Um, Sunday school continues. I know Becca's going to be leading the ch- uh, children's Sunday school at uh, 10 o'clock. So um, kids, uh, you'll, you'll be able to join um, Becca online for that a little bit later. Now, as far as what's happening here, um, there are a limited number of bulletins. We're trying this out because, for for one, we've become accustomed to pulling up bulletins on our tablets and phones and things like that. So if you really need something to follow along, you can, um, you know, feel free to kind of pull out your your tablet or your phone to to do that. And if you don't need a bulletin, that's great, too, because we're going to, we'll we'll walk you through the service. Um, we can sing. So just, just to clarify that, obviously we'll leave our, leave our masks on. We're limiting here to like one person at a time, so I'll put my mask back on when I'm done here with the call to worship. And uh, at the end of the service, we'll talk about it a little bit more, but we'll have the ushers excuse, um, excuse people by row, so don't just kind of immediately hop up. But um, again, thank you for your patience, and it is so good, just so good to see you and be here with you today. I can't, I can't express that enough. Well, I invite you to rise in body or in spirit and join in our call to worship you'll see up on the screen. How very good and pleasant it is when kindred gather together in worship. It is like anointing oil on the head, overflowing with blessing. It is like rains that fall on the mountains, which gather into streams that nourish the earth. For the Lord has called us to worship. And ordained us for service. Friends, let us worship the Lord with thanksgiving for all God has done. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning. It is nice to have uh, more people here to sing with. And I trust that if you don't feel comfortable singing, you'll at least uh, do a little humming. Psalm 147.1 says, Praise the Lord, for it is good to sing praises to our God. It is good. Let's uh, sing or hum. Together. One, two, three, four. Oh, oh, oh. 
Resting God alone, my rock and my salvation, a fortress strong against my foes, and I will not be shaken. Though lips may bless and hearts may curse, and lies like arrows pierce me, I'll fix my heart on righteousness, I'll look to Him who hears me. Find rest, my soul, in God alone, amidst the world's temptations. 
When evil seeks to take a hold, I'll cling to my salvation. Though riches come and riches go, don't set your heart upon them. The fields of hope in which I sow are harvested in heaven. Set my gaze on God alone and trust in Him completely. With every day pour out my soul and He will prove His mercy. Though life is but a fleeting breath, a sigh too brief to measure, my King has crushed the curse of death and I am His forever. Oh, praise Him, hallelujah, my delight and my reward, everlasting, never failing, my Redeemer, my God. Oh, praise Him, Alleluia, Alleluia, oh praise Him, oh praise Him, Alleluia, Alleluia, oh praise Him, oh praise Him, Alleluia, Alleluia. In my Bible, I found a passage from James titled, The Prayer of Faith. It starts like this. Is any of you in trouble? He should pray. Let, is anyone happy? Let him sing songs of praise. Is any of you sick? He should call on the elders of the church to pray over him and anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayers offered in faith will make the sick person well, and the Lord will raise him up. If he has sinned, he will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray each other for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. Let's first pray silently, confessing our sins to the Lord, and then in unison, using the prayer printed in the bulletin and on the screen. Here we are, Lord. Wait. 
Where are we? Okay. <laughs> Here we are, Lord. We ask for your mercy for our sins. Forgive us for our doubts and fear, and for not fully accepting you could walk us through our tribulations these past months. Let us be mindful of your faithfulness. Help us to choose your will, obey your commandments, and accept your grace. Guide our steps to a more righteous path. Light this path for us to work together as the one body of Christ. Friends, in Hebrews 10, 15 through 17, the Holy Spirit testifies to us, saying, This is the covenant that I will make with them after these days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts, and I will write them on their minds, and I will remember their sins and lawless deeds no more. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus' name, we are forgiven. Since God has forgiven us in Christ, let us forgive one another. The peace of Christ be with you. So please greet one another with the peace of Christ, social distance style, with a wave or a bow. I'll begin by greeting those worshiping with us at home. May the peace of Christ be with you. Our scripture, first scripture lesson today comes from John 20, 19 through 31. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus again said to them, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you, are, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples again were in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All right. I think we get to the, something really fun now. So we're going to do the time for young disciples, but rather than having the kids come forward and mingle everything, we're just going to do it here on the screen. Enjoy.
Hey kids, I hope you had a good week. Last Sunday we celebrated Easter. We celebrated the fact that Jesus rose from the dead and ascended into heaven. Before he ascended into heaven, Jesus met with his disciples. Let's join Tigger, Pooh, and Thomas to hear the story. The disciples were in a room with the door locked because they were afraid that the people who put Jesus on the cross would be coming to get them. Jesus appeared to them in the room and said, Peace be with you. So they were not afraid. He showed them his wounds from being on the cross, even letting Thomas put his fingers in the wound so they would have no doubt. They called me Doubting Thomas, but I believed. Jesus then told him that he was sending them into the world to spread the good news about his rising from the dead, just as God had sent him to the disciples. Jesus said, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. To help the disciples to convince those who had not been in the room to see Jesus, to believe, Jesus breathed on them and filled them with the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God. Yes, Tigger? So, unlike the virus that has us wearing these masks, the breath of the Holy Spirit is something we want to pass on to everybody, so they will believe in Jesus. Is that right? That is right, Tigger. Let us pray. Dear God, Thank you for sending Jesus to the disciples and filling them with the Holy Spirit so that we are now blessed to have the peace of knowing Jesus and to not be afraid. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you, but one of the things that I have so enjoyed during uh, the last year is seeing the creativity of our Time for Young Disciples uh, that people have put together in, uh, in video form. So that, I mean, not that I would trade that for everything else that we've had to go through, but, you know, that, that was pretty, um, that's pretty, pretty cool. So thank you to the Pappas for uh, uh, their offering this morning. So our second scripture lesson this morning is found in Acts chapter 4. Uh, it's a short one, verses 32 through 35. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions. But everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and, gave, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of, the, of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as they had need. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we ask that you would send your spirit to fill this place, fill our homes, fill us with your word, that our hearts might swell with, with grace and with power and understanding. Grant that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts would be holy and acceptable unto you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. As I mentioned at the start of Lent, the Easter season, um, it was going to be different this year. And um, while it's not anywhere near what I had once naively expected of our first day back, you know, the, the idea of a, a huge crowd, um, hugs, you know, fellowship, uh, Easter brunch, gathering around at tables and things like that, um, it's nothing like any of that. But it has been a blessing in many other ways I really did not anticipate at all. Um, as just seeing you here together in worship and being, being in this place, uh, what that you know, has meant. This week, I came in here and uh, all the, the preparations were going on for our hospitality team. We had all before the pictures that you had sent in and they were put up on the, on the pews. And when those were all taken out, it, all of a sudden it looked like it kind of normally should with the expectation that, that people would be in these pews. And, and here you are. So, um, you know, the gathering in the parking lot last week was, was really pretty cool for, for sunrise service. 
Uh, I'm not sure if that's a tradition we're going we're gonna to start here or, uh, or not, but um, it, was, it, was really, it was really neat. It was great to see you out here braving the cold and um, just, just to be together. Again, a lot of it is just seeing people, even you know, if it's only about half of your face. You know? um, what, what a tremendous blessing. But it has also been, um, well, before I go on, I, I'm kind of curious, how are you feeling? What is it like for you to be here again? If you ca- kind of call it, I can repeat it for the folks at home. Uh, anybody? Peaceful. Peaceful. It's wonderful. Wonderful. Joyous family church worship. It's like going home after being away at college. That's great. There was some, something else? Comforting. Comforting, yes. The week can start. A what? The week. The week can start. Can start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We realize how much, how important this is. This is so different because for the last year, um, about this time, I would be, you know, in my sweat, sweatpants, sitting on the couch watching TV, you know, worship and, and having my coffee. Um, and now I have to get up a little bit earlier and be here with you. Um, so, but I'm willing to give that up. That's okay. Uh, but for some of you at home, that might be become a little bit more part of your norm. Uh, you know, if you can't make it on Sunday, I, I kind of track the views sometimes on YouTube to see uh, what's happening. And, um, you know, when we're watching it at eight, there are more people generally, uh, there are more people here, I think, than are usually watching by the time that when we turn it on. Um, on, on 8.30, but that number kind of grows as people, you know, find time, and then even during the week, of course, that continues, so it's, it's amazing, um, you know, how, what that allows us, but also how it kind of disrupts a little bit of our rhythm, yeah, if we're, if we're not kind of here and, and getting the week started. Any other thoughts about how this, what, what this is like? Awesome. Awesome, yeah. Um, you know, I have to admit, it, it's, uh, it is all of those things, but it's, it's also a little bit kind of weird, like I said, you know, um, not just preaching to a camera, um, having, you know, people to respond, uh, and, you know, and things, so, uh, it, you know, it, it's just, it's really good, but it's also kind of strange in some way. It's been exciting and stressful, kind of the planning uh, for, for today, you know, the part of it's the technology piece, the streaming of the worship service. And even, even during the service, I'm anxious, like, oh, I hope the computer doesn't explode or, you know, something drops, the signal drops, or, you know, many of these bad things happen. Um, that, you know, all the, the COVID safety measures, you know, like signing up, reservations, kind of, we caught somebody coming through the wrong way. I'm looking at you, Susie, from the doors over there. And, uh, you know, so we have a, it's... Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, but we do have a strict three strikes rule, you know, and so we're, we're keeping, we're keeping, I'm just kidding, I am just, I'm just kidding. Uh, I've been so anxious about today, last night I had a, I had a dream um, that it was, you know, we're, we're kind of going through and making some preparations, going through all the little things to make sure that we know, you know, how the service is going to go, and part of it's been like relearning, when do we do the you know, the prayer of dedication and the doxology, you know, and all these kinds of things. And um, so in this, in this dream, we had the kind of the opening all prepared. And uh, you know how dreams are, you kind of go from one place to another. And I, and I go in and all of a sudden, it's like I'm, I'm in the middle of a, some big stadium. And, and, and I'm like, my gosh, and people are all, you know, are all spread out. And I, I commented to myself, I thought, well, this is, what, this is why it can look so full on TV if you watch a sporting event and people are spread out because when they stand up, you know, it looks like there's a lot more people. So I'm kind of overwhelmed by this. Nothing is going as I planned. I go over in the, to the, the, the Biddles and, um, and the Jaquins and, and um, Ed had a, a bulletin because I couldn't find a copy of a bulletin anywhere. I didn't know what we were, what we were doing. You know, I mean, I, I tell you, you can just look on your phone, but it's a little different. If I'm looking on my phone, it might look kind of strange to you. So I'm looking for this, and Ed's got this, this bulletin, nice, large, I don't know if he usually has a large print bulletin, it's like a large print bulletin, but we're going through, and it's mixed up with the, the order of worship and the, um, and the newspaper. And, we, and of course, I couldn't find anything, and things were just going crazy, so that's literally how I woke up this morning, and I guess I still have that feeling, and maybe I just need a little more coffee to kind of soothe myself a little bit. Or less coffee, as Paul's saying. 
But these, these feelings, um, the different feelings we've been talking about, could all describe the, 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 what the disciples experienced in the lesson from John's Gospel that Rainey just read for us. And we might add to that a sense of fear and doubt which was present among the disciples as well, including the joy and some of the anxiety that we have just talked about. Oh, and actually, speaking of anxiety, there's one thing I do want to clarify for you and for for those of you um, at home as well. The wording in our COVID procedures, I want to apologize, it doesn't actually adequately uh, convey the intent of our session. Um, so to, I want to clarify that worship attendance is not limited, is not limited solely to those who have been vaccinated, okay? It's not limited solely to those who have been vaccinated. You are welcome to come. Um, we just, what our intent was from session was to remind people of the, the risks and, you know, and to be aware of that. But you understand that, you, you know, we're here wearing masks and all these kinds of things. So um, if you know anybody that, that got tripped up by that, thank them for reading what we sent out. That's awesome. Um, but also let them know, yeah, we're sorry about that. And we're going, to, uh, we're, we're going to address that at our next session meeting and clarify that for everyone. So I um, wanted to let you know about that. And doggone it, every time we have, uh, as a session, looked at getting back together again, um, we, we've as we're, we're ready to do that, the numbers spike. And lo and behold, our numbers again are kind of spiking. But it's different because of the vaccines, and many of us have been vaccinated and so on. So, um, but just be aware, and let's hope that, uh, that the numbers don't translate into more hospitalizations and, uh, and, and so forth. And fortunately, right now, I think as of last night, there were nobody in the hospital for COVID, and uh, we want to kind of keep it that way. But the pandemic has been an emotional roller coaster hasn't it? I know it has been for, for the church. It's disrupted our daily lives. And so was the disciples' journey on Easter. Remember, on Friday, they watched as Jesus died and was buried. Saturday, they wept, and they kind of closeted themselves, locked away for fear of, of being persecuted by the religious authorities. And then on Sunday, Jesus appeared to them, and all of a sudden, they were all together once again, that he, he was alive, and yet he was different. He bore scars of his resurrection. His disciples could reach out and touch him, and yet he could also pass through locked doors to be in their presence. And of course, as we know, he would not stay with them forever, and yet he promised that they would never be alone, and this is true, that Jesus would remain present to them through the Holy Spirit. Now, John's Gospel, uh, in John's Gospel, Jesus breathes out the Holy Spirit on that night when he gathered, uh, you know, among them, and uh, his disciples uh, received the Spirit on Resurrection Day. Uh, Thomas was a little bit late to, the, uh, late, late to things, but uh, we, we assume that he received the Spirit as well. But Luke, in Luke, of course, he describes Pentecost and the coming of the Holy Spirit. So I don't want to get too far ahead of the story about the Spirit, but suffice it to say that the disciples were about to change. They were going to become apostles now. They were moving from being, being followers to now becoming proclaimers of the Word, announcing to the world a new life, a new way of relating to one another, a new way of relating to God, a hope for today and tomorrow and for eternity. And not only would they announce this new life, but they would, in fact, live it. It would be reflected in their community. Listen once again to what Luke writes in Acts chapter 4. Now, the whole group of those who believed, and at this point, this isn't just the disciples. They're talking about the early church. There are a couple summary statements along this line to, to show the, the growth of the church, but not just the numbers, but what that did to the people who came to believe. So when he says the whole group, now the whole group of those who believed, at this point is at least about 5,000 people, okay? About 5,000 people were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of, of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them. 
For as many owned lands or houses, sold them, and brought the proceeds of what was sold, they laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. These are hallmarks of the early church, the body of Christ, unity, generosity, and at the center of their life was the risen Lord Jesus Christ, who gave them great power from the Spirit and blessed them with great grace, as we're told. Now, I mentioned earlier about being anxious about coming together, and you know, some of that was uh, about the technology piece and making sure things would go okay. Some of that's coordinating all the procedures, even though I know that they're, they're in good hands with our hospitality team and who's done a wonderful job, thank you, by the way, and our tech team's done a wonderful job. I skipped down on a meeting yesterday when, when they were gathered here. I think for, it ended up being a few hours or whatever, but thank you so much for all of your work throughout the whole time. And, uh, and our, music, our music team has been, you know, wonderful as well and, and so, you know, ad- adaptive to all these things. So I was worried about how all these things would come together, worried about remembering how things were going to, uh, you know, going to flow exactly. Becca and I got in an argument about how, well, when does the prayer, when does this prayer happen? When does, you know, and all these things, because she's a worship assistant next week. I think we've got it figured out, right? It's all of these little things. And I reminded myself about how difficult this, week, this year has been. And I think seeing you, there's that sense of joy, but also that reminder of what we've missed and how hard it's been um, and the, the, the different kinds of sacrifices we've made. And for some of you, um, I, I noticed you're, you're not sitting in the same places because it's, it's wherever Mark, uh, Mark sat you uh, this morning. And if you slip him a 20, he can probably get you into the place where you want to, you know, your normal seat, I suppose. <laughs> So uh, that's what Mark told me was his his going price. You might be able to to talk him down a little bit. Um, And it, it, you know, it it sadly kind of reminds me also of the division, uh, the divisions that we have in our society as well. Uh, When I, you know, thought about the stress of kind of coming back together, um, you know, with all the division in in our world, in our society, and frankly, among the churches of Jesus Christ, and in response to the pandemic, it, it, it created a little bit of anxiety within me. And you know, it's hard when I think about that, and I think about the diversity of how the, the church of Christ has, has weathered this time. I mean, there's, there's quite, quite a range of, how, of responses. And we have tried to be faithful to who we are in our response, but we understand that you know, that's not everybody's going to say that was great or, or what have you. And so with all of this, it's hard to envision a Christian community like the one in Acts, right? It, you know, wonder, is it possible for the body of Christ to be of one heart and soul anymore? Think about that. Is it possible for the body of Christ to be of one heart and soul anymore? Is it possible for such generosity and common wear, welfare, uh, for, for that to be in practice so that no one would have any needs? Is it possible And in a jaded world such as ours, it's easy to dismiss this picture of the Christian community as somehow unattainable or not worth striving for. As if to ask, is unity and self-sacrifice so essential to sharing Jesus Christ to the world? Can we share Jesus Christ without unity and self-sacrifice? The answer can be found in the nail-scarred hands and feet of our risen Lord Jesus Christ. It can be seen in the wound in his side where he was pierced by the soldier's spear. That proclamation apart from community and apart from mutual concern, well, that proclamation is but a whisper now. It's not the full-throated gospel of Jesus Christ. That unity and generosity are essential marks of Christ within us, which we should always seek and cultivate but I fear that the church of Christ has forgotten this. That our witness has been more often and more recently maybe shaped by the world rather than the other way around. And it's something that we all, we all struggle with. And I fear that perhaps we dismiss the power of Christ to transform fear and doubt, to reconcile factions, to mend broken spirits, and to breathe new life where there was only once death and despair. I spoke with a friend about this passage this week, and it dawned on me as we were talking that 
Um, this passage may not be so much of a call for us to immediately sell our things and, or, you know, and, and move in with one another. I, th- I, I thought about that. We talked about it in Bible study. What would it take for you to invite, uh, you know, invite members of, of, I don't know, name whatever social group into your home you know, over a long, long, time, uh, long period of time? What would it take? Right? We all have different thresholds. And we all love one another, but it's one, thing to, it's one thing to love one another when you get together. And you know what it's like to live with people. You know? I mean, it, it's, it's a, it's a wholly, totally different kind of experience. What would that take? Is this passage a memory of once, what once was? Is it a vision of what will be? I think it is on both accounts. And perhaps it is too much for us to attain, and yet... We must all repent of the idea to, that we think that it is not possible or that we are not called to seek this type of life together. Are, all, are not all things possible in Jesus Christ? Right? So perhaps the text as it comes to us today is in fact an invitation for us to think about our life in community to begin by repenting, to, to ask God for uh, God's forgiveness, to ask God, how can your heart and your soul be manifest in me? And how can my life reflect your selflessness, the sacrifices that you've made? To be generous, our possessions, our time, our hearts, I think about the, the, uh, the, the time and the possessions and things and, and the generosity that I've seen among those who have helped put worship together um, for, for us this past year. Um, incredible amounts of time, a lot of stress, you know, a lot of anxiety about how things are, you know, how things are going to work out. I'm looking over that way too. <laughs> um, and a lot of patience with one another. You've been in, in, in immensely patient with us through a lot of technical difficulties as we've kind of found our way. But also to be generous of heart. That person who thinks differently than you about, you know, fill in the blank, whatever that might be, they're suffering too, just as we all are. Struggling to understand things, to be faithful, to hear God. So we can be generous of heart to, to hold back when we might speak and, and listen instead. And that we should all remember that the source of the church's power is not in human hands, but it is in our risen Lord Jesus Christ. He is the center of our community. He alone has the power to bring unity out of diversity, to calm fears and to ease anxiety to make believers out of doubters as he did, proclaimers out of deniers, and to bring the dead back to life. And we are here today by the grace of God. Let us pray. Lord, thank you. spark within us a desire to seek unity in Christ. Grow within us generous hearts that we give freely of all that we have, being attentive to your call and to the needs of others. And bless and guide us and our brothers and sisters in Christ throughout the world as we continue our way through this time of pandemic, the light that we see at the end of the tunnel. Help us in all ways to walk with you. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. We have a... um, Minute for ministry uh, that we're going to show you here. We, we recorded this earlier. Uh, this is for um, for Mike Sophie, and, and you'll you'll see in it what uh, 
what it's, what it's for in terms of all the work that he's done on our website. And I, I don't probably need to say much more than that. But uh, when you, if you have a chance, if you, when you see Mike or you want to send him an email or note, um, thank him. As uh, we, We've been so grateful for all of his uh, contributions and uh, um, his sacrifices too. So let's play that. Friends, one of the things that we like to do, um, and, and maybe don't do it well enough, quite honestly, in the life of the church, is to celebrate uh, the gift of, of those who uh, offer them in service to Christ, um, you know, behind the scenes. And I'm not sure how many of you have actually gone to our website, but I know that you have gone to the website much more over the last year than probably ever before. And that has meant changes, constant changes to our website every week to make sure that it's up to date. And that doesn't happen magically. It happens because of Mike Sophie, who, how, for how many years have you, been, have you been running the website? Six. Six years has been running the church website. Um, Lauren is going to be taking over that, those duties here. Um, uh, and we, we want to thank Mike for all of his work, um, again, behind the scenes, to make sure that you have information, and not just you, but the people who have been looking for a church home. The first place that they go is usually not in the sanctuary. They go to our website, and there they can learn about us and what's happening um, in the life of the church. So as a thank you to Mike, uh, we have, on behalf of the staff and the session, a uh, gift that, that, Lauren, can you tell us what, what we have here? Well, uh, we've got a, a beautiful handmade card for you. And then also uh, a gift certificate for you to spend in any way you choose. The things that you collect or hobbies or anything you'd like. And I just want to say thank you to you as well because when I first started here and started doing video editing, Mike stayed on the phone with me for hours helping me, walking me through it. So I really appreciate everything you do and everything you've done for the church. And so on behalf of the church and session, we want to provide this gift to you. Thank you. Very nice. I appreciate it. And um, what are you going to do with an Amazon gift card? Uh, well, we've got some traveling uh, uh, to do in the fall when the COVID uh, pandemic is uh, slowed a little bit. Okay, for some, some travel, maybe some books to read along the way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, perhaps. I think I have enough books to last me. I don't know. If, if you have to say that you have enough books, that means that there's never enough. That's I'm, right. I'm never sure. enough books. <laughs> so, but Mike, uh, but Mike, thank you. And let's, let's have a word, word of prayer. Gracious God, we are so grateful for uh, Mike and what he has done. Uh, for the church and our website um, these six years. We um, indeed thank you for all who, like Mike, have shared their gifts and their talents and, and do so uh, freely uh, in support of your ministry here um, and your kingdom. So we, we thank you and um, we praise you for, for Mike and uh, for the gifts that he has shared with us that continues to share. Yeah, in Jesus' name. Oh, Mike, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. <laughs> All right. Great. When I studied on giving, I found a quote from Mother Teresa. She said, Faithfulness to the little things will help us grow in love. We have all been given a lighted lamp, and it, it, it is for us to keep it burning. We can keep it burning only if we keep pouring oil inside. That oil comes from our acts of love. When someone tells me that the sisters have not started big work, that they are quietly doing small things, I say that even if they helped one person, it was enough. Jesus would have died for one person, for one sinner. As an act of love and gratitude, we are called to give. We can give our tithes and offerings by dropping them into the offering plate in the fellowship hall today, or we can mail them to the First Presbyterian Church 
at 139 West 8th Street in Port Angeles, Washington, 98362. Or we can give online by going to that church's website at fpcpa.org and clicking on the Give Now button. It really is that easy. And now we can give of our time and our talent to fill that lamp every single day. Please rise in body or spirit for the doxology. We are grateful for your great mercy. We offer our tithes and talents and time. Bless this money and our faithful service to further your kingdom. Amen. So for the prayers of the people today, um, what we're going to do is have you, um, we're not going to pass a microphone around, uh, but we'll have you stand in, in, in place if you have a prayer request that you'd like to offer, and then I will uh, repeat them back so that you can all hear, and, and people uh, at home as well will be able to, uh, to hear. We, we do have one that I'll share with you from Kate Weller. Uh, she had to leave a little bit early, so she passed a note along. Uh, she asked prayers for comfort for uh, her mother as she faces life without her husband of 56 years. Um, and prayers for all families like ours, she says, who have lost loved ones uh, to this pandemic. Uh, prayers of thanksgiving and for the blessing of her father's life and, uh, uh, and, his, and a peaceful passing and the knowledge that he is now with, um, with our Lord. So um, we'll pray for, for Kate and her family. Uh, are there other, other prayer requests that uh, joys or concerns that you'd like to share? Go ahead, Beth. Thank you, Beth Ann. So Beth Ann's just sharing a word of thanksgiving um, for, in, in her case, she's picking up CDs, uh, doesn't have a computer, so th throughout this year. And, um, you know, that just highlights also all the, all the work, you know, from our, from our office staff and our deacons um, and, and others just helping, helping people to get, get the service and, and the word, yeah. Oh, that's great. That's cool. So she, she sent worship CDs to, uh, to, to family members across the U.S. That's, that is awesome. Thanks. That's really cool. And also prayers for uh, our, our, our schools, the teachers and students are beginning back from spring break. And is that when they start the new schedule this next week? So the kids will be half days. 
So a lot of adjustments for our teachers um, and, and their families, for sure. And um, so, yeah, prayers for them. Other, yeah. Um, I want to thank you all for welcoming me here and also um, for my mom who is um, very ill. She's in California and uh, it's hard not to be able to go and be with her. Yeah. Thank you, Carrie. That's Car- Carrie Hines, uh, and uh, she is, is uh, we've, we've chatted already and, and has kind of been introduced to the church uh, a lot through V and um, is joining us today. If you remember from our prayer requests, we sent out in our prayer chain, uh, prayers for Carrie's mom, um, who is in her last, uh, her last days or, or weeks, however long it might be. And, um, and yes, prayers for you. you. You can't be there for her, and, um, but in, in spirit, certainly. So other, other joys and concerns to share. Yeah, Susie. Yay! So her last brain scan was uh, was was showed she's cancer free and it's clear for five five years. So, over praise God. So prayers and prayers for your husband as well, just to, to know Christ and to find that peace that you found, yes. Other, uh, other, other joys or concerns? Yeah, okay. Prayers for those who are suffering from the, the coronavirus, especially with the, the spikes and, uh, that we're seeing in different um, uh, variants as well. Yeah. Paul? So the joy of painting the Habitat for Humanity house yesterday, we got it completed. There were about 11 people there painting and the dedications next week, and it's just awesome. Great. So they painted the Habitat house yesterday and got it all done. And the dedication is going to be, do we have a date yet? Next, next, Saturday. next Saturday. Awesome. So, um, yeah, that's been, a, that's been a long road as well. But that's, that's great. The Pappas have been awesome. Yeah, yeah. The Pappas have been great. V? Just to continue lifting up Marty and John Melcher in our prayers. Okay. Yeah, Marty, uh, prayers for Marty and, and John. Um, and, you know, as they uh, have decisions to make about their, their living circumstance and, and care and so on. Yeah. Donna? Yes, lifting up Christy Wright for the loss of John. Yes. Yeah, prayers for Christy Wright. I had that on my note here too for uh, John, John's passing um, on, on Easter. Uh, we're meeting tomorrow to talk about uh, John's service, uh, planning that for next Sunday at, uh, at two o'clock. So, um, of course, we'll have to have, you know, all the things we're doing here, too. Other, uh, other prayers? Well, let, uh, let us pray. God, what a blessing it is that we can share in person uh, our joys and our concerns with one another. Uh, to hear these prayer requests, uh, to, to share life, um, and, and to share peace and joy and comfort as well. We pray for Kate's mom and for her family at the passing of uh, Kate's dad. We pray that you would especially bless her mom uh, as she grieves his, his passing reflects back on 56 years of marriage. Pray for all the families who have had um, similar losses in their lives over this past year and the struggles that they've faced because of that. 
We lift up Carrie's mom to you. We pray that you will bless her and um, in her last days, that you would um, bless Carrie and um, help her with the, the challenge of not being able to be with her mom, but unite them uh, in spirit and find ways that they can um, connect and, and walk with one another um, as she journeys on to be with you. We pray for all who are suffering from the effects of the coronavirus, and we see those effects in many ways. They're not just um, physical, uh, but they're emotional and spiritual, economical, and in and, and different ways. So uh, we, we do pray for, uh, for our world. We pray for Marty and John, guidance for their uh, choices, decisions that they need to make um, for, for their own circumstances. We ask comfort for Christy as um, she mourns John's passing and as she uh, works on preparations for his service and all the other things that uh, one must do to the passing of spouse. We continue to pray for Margaret Wettstein's uh, relative, Patrick, and uh, we ask that you would um, Renew his spirits, refresh him in, in this time, give him a, a sense of, of hope as, as he struggles with some health concerns. God, we are thankful to be here. Thankful for the many, many contributions that have um, taken place in, in ways that we have not been able to see because we haven't been able to be together. But thank you for all of these contributions and efforts of, of really everyone to help uh, continue the, the, the community that we have in, in you and, and in our worship. We, we do um, pray for our, our, our schools and our teachers, students, and their parents um, as they come back from spring break and adjust to a new uh, schedule. Um, we are, are so grateful for uh, Susie's um, great news about an, another you know, clear brain scan that she's cancer-free. And um, we're grateful that she sees that, that you are uh, the source of this healing. And may it be also that you would open the heart of her husband to, uh, um, to find that, that peace and that wholeness that is only available in you, O oh Lord. And we're so grateful for... Um, the Habitat painting yesterday and the work that's gone on over the course of, of, of you know, more than a year of the faith build, but even long before that, when it was uh, a seed of a thought that you had planted in Anna's heart um, that is now coming to fruition. So thank you for her persistence and the efforts of so many to, um, to make a home for Kaylee and her family. And may you bless that home richly. Lord, we, um, we just take in this moment of being in prayer together. And Lord, may you hear us now as we share the prayer your son taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Not sure where to stand now. How about right here? I don't want to see you go. Thank you for being here. Really, thank you. Um, I hope it, it uh, really warms your heart as much as, as mine just to be in this place together. Um, our ushers are going to excuse you so uh, by, by row. Um, it's kind of like you know, walking through the, you know, following the lines in the grocery store and stuff. And I know some of us kind of cheat a little bit here and there, but we're gonna try to, we're gonna try to do this and we'll, we'll have exit this way. Um, if you'd like to stay, it's a nice day out. If you'd like to stay in fellowship outside, um, you know, please do. Okay, um, and uh, you know, mask. How are you going to want to do that? I'll, I'll trust you on, on all of that. But we're we're just not fellowshipping right here in the fellowship hall. So, um, scooch on scooch on out that way is your excuse. And as you're watching, and those of you at home, we'll have our slideshow coming up here as well, um, as as we've done. Um, that has been a really popular thing. I think that's people have loved. I've loved to see uh, what Rita creates, and um, so we'll, we'll see some slideshows of some of your Easter pictures and from. Um, last Sunday. If you are out as the slideshow is going, go home, watch it on YouTube. How's that sound? Okay. And uh, wow. Go in peace. Love and serve the Lord, your God, with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And may the resurrection power of our Lord Jesus Christ bless you richly in these days. Amen. Amen.